How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the Salamander Wilds. Now in this video I want to discuss basic care for salamander larvae. It's a care guide that I've wanted to do for quite some time but because I don't own any larvae myself and haven't for quite a while either, I've been hesitant to put this out because I didn't want to just compile some random footage. However, I think with the footage that I do have now, I can compile something that is worth putting out, something notable that can provide some pretty good information for anyone that does own larvae. That way they can have a better understanding of how to care for them and transition them to land. And so with that said, we're gonna get right into it. And if you enjoy the video, please remember to leave a like, share, comment down below, please subscribe, and also don't forget to check out the description for the links to the official Salamander Wilds Facebook page, Instagram, and Discord. So let's start out with some very basic details. What is a salamander larva? Salamander larva are pretty much the equivalent to a tadpole. These salamanders are baby salamanders that have hatched from their eggs. And in particular, they emerge from eggs that are laid in the water and hatch in the water and live in the water and will grow until they are ready to transition to land. Eggs are either laid in cool flowing streams with moving water or vernal pools where the water is still and calm. And these habitats are quite distinct from one another, and the salamanders that utilize them depends on the species. The eggs shown here were laid by a two-line salamander, a stream-dwelling, lungless salamander whose larva is dependent on cool, flowing streams. These larvae are equipped with external feathery gills that allow them to live and thrive in these oxygen-rich flowing streams. And as they grow, their gills will gradually shrink until they eventually disappear and morph into the adult two-line salamander shown here. There are other salamander larvae that depend on vernal pools in order to live as opposed to streams. Vernal pools are still bodies of water, so the salamanders that live in vernal pools live in water that's relatively calm with little to no current and should be housed as such when kept in captivity, as strong water current could actually prove stressful or even fatal. An example of a salamander that utilizes vernal pools for breeding would be the spotted salamander. Spotted salamander larvae are also equipped with external feathery gills. However, in contrast to the two-line salamander larvae, the spotted salamander larvae will start to develop lungs as it grows. And as it grows and its lungs develop, the gills will also start to shrink. And they will need to go to the surface of the water for air in order to get oxygen as well, as shown here in this clip. Eventually, this salamander's gills will disappear completely and the paddle-like tail will become less suitable for the water and the larva will transition to land and grow into the spotted salamander adult shown here. And so with these details, even though there are many similarities between salamander larvae, there's also quite a few differences and it's important to understand what those differences are. Those differences will determine how the salamander larva must be kept. And as an example, in this case, the two salamanders that were just compared, the spotted salamander and two-line salamander, those larvae live very differently in the wild and cannot be kept the same way. So with all those details in mind, let's talk about the basics of housing. As I just said a moment ago, you're gonna to have to figure out the correct way to house your larva. Is flowing water appropriate or should the water be calm and still? If your larva requires any water current, you can simply hook up an air stone to an air pump with an air hose. And these items are easily acquired at your local pet store. 
or if you've determined that no water current is necessary, you can just simply move on to setting up the enclosure. And choosing an enclosure is actually pretty easy and straightforward. A simple plain pet carrier or 10 gallon tank will work pretty well. The Eastern Newt larva shown in the clip here is well at home in this complex, well planted setup. It is able to hide and thrive in a setup that closely resembles what it would encounter in nature. With that being said, enclosures definitely don't need to be anywhere near as complex as what is shown here. In fact, I would highly recommend to keep the enclosure plain and simple and barren for the most part. That way, you can keep a close eye on your larva and actually watch them grow, as opposed to this setup here where the larva can hide and you might not be able to find it right away. A much more simple setup will ensure that feeding goes much easier as well. And as you'll notice in this clip, you could see the adults swimming around as well. The enclosure was initially made for the adults and not the larva. So you'll definitely want to separate the larva from the adults because the adult newts or salamanders can and will eat the larva. Now, as we can see here on this website, there is actually an example of how larva can be housed when they hatch in this little picture here. This is just a basic tub or pet carrier and there's a whole bunch of larvae that just hatched and can safely be housed together um, not that long after hatching. However, as they start to grow, they will also have to be separated as well as they will start to nip each other and go after any other larvae that may be smaller than those that are larger respectively. With housing, it says no aeration is necessary and that's mostly true for commonly kept species which is why I said at the beginning that determining what sort of larva you have, which species it is, is important to determining if you need aeration or water current in your setup. And for the most part, commonly kept species such as newts or even axolotl larvae, they don't need aerated conditions in their enclosure. And we can see there's another tub right here that shows exactly that. It's a simple setup with nothing in it, no lid, and these animals can be kept just like that. It's that simple. You will need to, of course, keep up with water changes to remove any leftover uneaten food and waste. Feeding salamander larvae can be a bit of a challenge due to the small size of these animals and due to the potential unavailability of certain foods, as a lot of these foods aren't commonly kept in big chain pet stores and you may have to do a bit more digging to get your hands on some of these foods. If you look closely in this clip here, you'll see tiny organisms swimming around. And you'll notice that the larva in this clip does a bit of a jump. That right there was this animal feeding on a tiny organism. Salamander larvae will require food that is alive and moving and of an appropriate size. So that means they'll require food that is quite small, especially when they have first hatched. Daphnia are an excellent food source for larvae that are still under one inch in size. These are freshwater organisms, so they can survive in the tank with your larva until they're eaten. And because of this, Daphnia would be considered the ideal food choice first and foremost to obtain for a small larva. Next up is baby brine shrimp or newly hatched brine shrimp. These are another great food source to utilize for salamander larvae due to their very small size. However, they're not as desirable as Daphnia because these need to be hatched in salt water and when you introduce these as food to your larva, the salt content will also be introduced into the enclosure with your salamander larva as well. And high salt content is not good for salamanders, of course. So this is definitely something to be careful of. But not only that, brine shrimp will not survive in fresh water. And that is because, of course, these require salt water to live and will inevitably end up perishing if they are not eaten right away. And so any leftover uneaten brine shrimp will end up fouling the water, so it's very important to clean out anything that's left. 
Worms are a salamander's best friend, and this is true whether it's an adult salamander or larva. White worms are a great choice of food to pick here because they are usually an appropriate size for larger larva and even some adults, but they also promote feeding due to their movement as well since salamanders go by movement and especially larva. However, they're not easily obtainable in many pet stores and especially not in big chain pet stores, you'll have to order these online most likely. And along similar lines, live blackworms are also another great pick here as well. Now, live blackworms tend to be larger than white worms, but these are still really great food sources to use regardless because they will also provoke a feeding response from your salamander. And just the same as white worms, Live black worms are also not as easily obtained in many pet stores, so you'll definitely have to check a smaller local pet store for these as opposed to a bigger chain pet store. I'll also quickly mention frozen blood worms. These are usually meant for larger larvae and aquatic adults, but as your larva grows, they will also start to go by smell, not only movement, so frozen blood worms will be a great pick here. Frozen bloodworms are pretty easy to obtain in big chain pet stores such as PetSmart, so you won't have to go searching for too long to find these. And with that, I'll wrap up feeding here. Remember to not overfeed and always clean up any leftover uneaten food. And of course, I will be leaving the link to this website in the description below, so be sure to check that out. As your larva grows and develops, it will of course grow bigger in size, but it will also start to change in its appearance. Those external feathery gills and that paddle-like tail, those are going to start to shrink and your animal is going to start becoming more suitable for the land. So this means your larva is getting ready to transition from water to a terrestrial animal just like this little eastern newt shown here. And in this photo here, you can see that this larva has practically no feathery gills left and the tail is no longer paddle-like. In fact, it is now ready to transition to land. And if you witness it firsthand, you may even see your larva, or in this case, the eastern newt eft in this photo, swim frantically as it is trying to find some form of land to climb onto for safety because at this point that newt or salamander that was once a larva is no longer suitable for the water. Now that is with some exceptions of course because stream dwelling salamanders can still go in and out of water and certain newts can still be raised aquatically as well. But you may see them opt for land during the transition. And so a lot of these details are definitely based on the species that you're keeping, so be sure to do as much research as possible on the species that you have. And in the case of the Eastern Newt here, they are completely terrestrial as the F stage and are hydrophobic at this point. So with all that being said, just make sure if you see any larvae that are ready to transition to a terrestrial stage and they are losing their aquatic features, just make sure you have some sort of land feature available for them to climb up to safety. And once you see your larva have transitioned, it's pretty much time to put them in their own terrestrial enclosure, just like the one that you see here. And from here, it'll be time for it to live out the next stage of its life. And with that, I'm going to wrap up the care guide here. This was a guide with just the basic details to get, I think, even beginners familiar with what salamander larvae actually are and how they should be kept. And even prepare beginner and familiar keepers alike with the transition from water to land. Perhaps I'll do something a bit more in depth in the future at some point. Salamander larvae can definitely be a challenge to raise but with the right care and dedication, you can definitely get them through to the next stage of life. 
And if you enjoyed the video, please remember to leave a like, share, comment down below, and please subscribe. Of course, your support is very much appreciated. And until next time, everyone, stay curious and journey into the salamander wilds.